Now, a priest has gotten himself into trouble. A priest. This is what he says. Uh, do we have a, a text about it? Uh, okay, yes. So the priest says, Baumia led MPP to win 2024 polls with 50.9%, with 105 three seats, Kumasi-based prophets. The guy has put himself into NDC trouble. Because this is what he said. He said, if Baumia leads the MPP, he will get 50.9 and MPP will get 153 seats for the 2024 election. Okay, these are the details. A Kumasi-based prophet who is famously credited with predicting election results accurately has once again prophesied victory for the ruling MPP in 2024 elections with the Vice President, Dr. Muhammadu Baumia, as his flag bearer. Prophet Paul Kusiapia of the Charismatic Temple International Ministry located at Ayensua says the ruling party will secure 50.9 in the presidential elections and 153 seats come December 7, 2024. The MPP will surely emerge victorious in the 2024 election. Dr. Baumia will be their flag bearer and he will win 13 regions out of 16, whilst the MPP will secure 153 seats to lead parliament. Prophet Kusiapia stated, quote, Dr. Baumia will secure 64% of the votes in the presidential primaries by winning 13 out of the 16 regions he predicted. Ah, that's him. Okay, young man. Hey, young man, you like trouble, oh. Hmm. According to him, the current Asante Regional Chairman of the MPP, Chairman Wun Tumi, holds the key to the victory of the MPP, adding that Chairman Wun Tumi will also take the mantle from Mr. Stephen in team, who will only serve one term as the National Chairman. Hey, hey, hey. Chairman Wun Tumi is going to be the National Chairman. Of, you know Wun Tumi is my man. Wun Tumi there is my man. No two ways about it. So... I had a video of, please play that video. Now, now we started with here in Kennedy, Japan. <laughs> they were in the studio talking. Please, please play that video. Now that they mentioned what we play, then we go on. Play that video. What do you say? 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 What do you do you say? What do you I know, I'm not saying, I'm not 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 I'm I'm not 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 I know, I'm not saying, 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 i am not and they are all laughing. Is that not beautiful? Why do you have to? Is that, is that not beautiful? Who to me is talking? He says something about Anas. He says, Anas, me name no pow. Then Kennedy said, I saw the Akron phone call. And you know, Kennedy has a problem with Anas. We all know that. He said, the Akron phone call. And he said, I said, I call for me to sell. And then they are all laughing. That's beautiful. Okay. Good evening to President Mahama. Good evening to Al Hadi Baumia. Now, let me say something. Now, a serious time now, viewers. I'm sharing the research with you. We've moved from entertainment to now inform and educate. Okay. The elections can be won by NPP. It can be won by NDC. NDC could win. NPP could win. CPP cannot win. But NPP could win. NDC could win. We know that already. Okay. So at this stage, some NDC people think they've already won. It's okay. No problem. This election is going to be peculiar in a certain way. Because the, in, in, in the context of the incumbency... We, we call something in political science the uh, deficit quotient of the incumbent. So every incumbent suffers a deficit quotient. I'll tell you a story again. I'm, I'm sorry, I have too many stories. In the second round of election 2008, we were going to Kumase. I was going to report, but of course, everyone knew my relationship with Akufado. So there was campaign in Kumase. Mills was in Kumase. Akufado was in Kumase. Second round. So we were at the Accra airport, boarding a plane. I believe I was with Gabi Ochoidako and uh, Yao Kwachi and somebody. 
sitting on one side of the table, on the chairs, waiting for the plane. Then the other side was, when we showed up, the other side was Atu Ahoy, Kwame Pepra, Kojo Bonsu, and I believe the guy from Infantiman, Aquinas Kwansa. So Aquinas Kwansa, Kojo Bonsu is my brother, or my senior brother, I should say, Kwame Pepra, and Atu Ahoy. Myself, Gabi Oshidaku, and Yaokwachi, something like that. So we're all standing there, uh, you know, the te- you, could, you could hold the tension in the small space. We're waiting for Antrak and Alaji Bandes plane. <laughs> okay, we're all there, quiet, nobody's talking. Then Kojo Bonsu broke the ice. Let me tell you what he said. Well, then the Kojo said, hmm, I deal with the idea. Mumu suru, yes, yes, Then everybody laughed. And he, and he captured the mood. We were all going, this is second round 2008. We were going to Kumasi and this is Ato Ahoy, big mills people, senior mills people. And Gabi Ochidako, proper Akufado advisor. They were all there. Mm-hmm. Kojo Bonsu said, hey, I deal with the idea. Mumu suru, yes, yes, suru. And then we all laughed. Then Kwame Pepra told me something. I asked him that why is he confident that NDC will win? I had already started my work. They said, let me tell you something. The incumbency thing. He said he's been a minister of finance. By the time you're a minister for four years and for eight years, you have offended so many people. I said, why? He said, because he's been a minister of finance. He comes to work and they said 35 people are waiting for him. He cannot see all the 35 people. He just physically can't. He sits in the office and they say, Rollins is calling him. And he drives away to the castle. He comes back and they said, the the vice president is calling you. Then he goes. Then there's a meeting. Then he goes. 35 people are waiting. You can see only three of them. He said, the rest who go away, they will not vote for you. If you've done that for eight years, I should imagine how many little, little votes you are losing. The incumbency is always difficult. And I told him about the political science, the, the deficit quotient of incumbent. And he said, then he said, so your man is not going to win. If he didn't win the first round, he will not win the second round. That's what Kamipra told me. I just smiled. I didn't see anything. I said, okay. And then the plane took off and went to Kumasi. Eventually, Professor Mills actually did win. Kamipra was right. Now, the incumbency issue is all, always affects incumbents. So if Dr. Balmia, and I, it's a big if, if Dr. Balmia is elected, I'll show you a Dr. Balmia video. Please remind me, I have a Dr. Balmia video. Very important one I need to show to viewers this evening after this conversation. If Dr. Balmia is elected, he will be challenging President Mahama. Now, what's going to happen to the incumbency deficit quotient in the presidential election? Whereas Dr. Balmia, and this is good for the MPP, whereas Dr. Balmia is going to carry some, he's going to share it with President Mahama, when, in fact, the opposition leader doesn't carry any of it at all. This particular opposition leader is going to carry some of it because he's been president before. And we are building this analysis so that when the results start coming in on the 9th of uh, December 8th, we will be putting it together. You know, this is what we talk about. The, the, the incumbency deficit quotient is going to affect President Mahama as well. Fortunately for Dr. Balmia, even though he's running on incumbent third term, He's going to share that with President Mahama, and we have positioned it this way. We think Dr. Balmia is going to bear 65% of the incumbency disadvantage, and John Mahama is going to bear 35% of it. That's our own analysis. It could be, it could be different. You can vary the figures one way or the other. It depends on how the campaign goes. We will, we will update the figures when the campaign starts. But as of now, we think, based on the fact that John Mahama has been president before, he's going to share the incumbent Deficit quotient with Dr. Baumia. We think 35% President Mahama, uh, 65% Al Haji Baumia. So that's because ordinarily Dr. Baumia should be carrying the load, 100% of incumbency deficit quotient. But because President Mahama has been president before, and the MPP can actually run as an opposition. That's very interesting, isn't it? MPP can build campaign as an opposition. What did President Mahama do? When President Mahama did this, when he came in, that, that's, that's like, that sounds like opposition. But in this context, you are able to run against President Mahama as if he is the government and you are the opposition. That's, that's what we found in the presidential election, and we'll be updating it. Now, let's look at the parliamentary election. Incumbency deficit quotient for in the parliamentary election of 2024. It is so unique, never happened. So you have a ruling party and you have an opposition party. How are they going to distribute it? 137, 137. So 137 of NDC MPs are going into the campaign as incumbents. 
suffering the incumbent deficit quotient. If they were less, far less, like it was in 2008, if they were far less, it's, it's better. But here, they are split it open with the ruling party. So whereas the ruling party would have bought the entire brand of the incumbent deficit quotient, the opposition party is splitting it with them in parliament and taking some of it from them in the presidential. How is this going to play out when results start coming from Bongo, from Dadekutupon, from Menshia? And we will fit it in and show you that this is incumbent deficit quotient. This is how it's splitting up. This is how they voted against President Mahama in 2016. And they have repeated voting against President Mahama again. And that is incumbent deficit quotient that has suffered, that President Mahama has suffered in this particular constituency. Dr. Baumia may have a constituency where MPP have won, but MPP loses on the night. And we will show you that this constituency that MPP won, they've lost it tonight because Dr. Baumia has suffered incumbent deficit quotient. We'll be dealing with that as we go on. But you can discuss it in your office and on social media. Let's see how it is. But these are the facts. MPP and NDC are going to split it 137, 137. That's what it's going to be. And this is unusual for an election. Now, for both uh, parties... For both parties, they will have to look at the 2008 notes. For the NDC, they were coming from opposition in 2008. So they look at how, what they did to win. For the MPP, they were looking for a third term in 2008. So they, they should look at why they lost and correct those things they lost. One of the important things they've corrected is the 17 presidential candidates. That's been corrected quite nicely. Because that was one of the reasons why Nana Kufado could not secure the 25%, uh, 25,000 he wanted. The division among the party, President Kufado told me that in an interview that we still have. So that's one thing MPP have corrected. There are many other things that happened in 2008 for which reason the MPP lost. And there are many things that happened in 2008 for which reason the NDC won. One of them was major propaganda, major vile propaganda that Akufuado was a like, cocaine, this, that, that, that. That, that. that campaign did work. It's propaganda, but it worked. So I'm not surprised that the NDC is picking up the propaganda again. You saw the Sami Jinfi, Baulaya stuff. They are picking it up again. Propaganda is going to be more difficult to survive in 2024's election because it will be the second election that is digital. And digital, that's how Sami Jinfi has been caught about the Baulaya thing. Digital is very easy for people to verify. Very, very easy. And digital takes the news quicker. But it also verifies very quickly. Very, very quickly it can be verified. So propaganda is going to struggle. I'll show you another matter. Let's get to the figures of the election. And MPP must watch this very carefully. Very, very carefully. Okay. You will see from this data that I'm going to share with you that any time the NDC does well in an and we have compared 2012, 16, uh, no, 2008, uh, 12, 16, and 20. We have compared four elections, and I'll show you the data in all of these. Anytime the NDC do well, you will see a significant rise in sports ballots. That, that's, that's from the data I'll show you. Don't, don't, don't worry, don't, don't panic yet. It's clearly in the data. Anytime the NDC does well in the election, there's a rise in sports ballots. I can speak of 2008, and this is not necessarily verifiable, but journalists know this. And it's not something I can stand in court and say, but journalists know it. There was alleged to be something called Yomo Mafia. In 2008, it was, it was widely alleged. Yomo Mafia. Do you know what Yomo Mafia is? It was propounded by a particular political party. So at the count of the elections, if you have reported elections like I have, you understand what I'm saying. At the count of the elections, the ballots are poured onto the table. So we are all there. And then the Electoral Commission people will separate the ballots. This is not Kufado, this is Professor Mills, blah, blah, blah. And then before they count, it is alleged that in the process... Some people attend the place with yomo in their hair. So they pass the yomo in their hair and they are looking for the ballots of the opponent and touch it. So when the thing is there and they, if the opponent is Professor Mills and they see that this vote, you see the thing is not open for counting yet, but you can see. And they see this vote Professor Mills, they touch it. As they are splitting, they are touching, they are touching as much as they can. And it's happening in 38,000 polling stations. It's called yomo mafia. It is executed perfectly. An allegation that in 2008 it was a major factor. So they do, their, they do like this, then they touch, it, they touch it. So there was a lot of slapping and beating in 2008. Stop touching your head. And we said, why was this violence for? He said, why is he touching his head? In 2016, gloves were provided. I'm coming to that, don't worry. So the Yomo Mafia thing, NDC and MPP both need to watch it. Especially MPP, they need to watch it. 
So 2008, NPP, 4,159,000 something something, representing 49%. NDC, 4,056,000, representing 47%. Rejected ballots, 205,000. 205,000 rejected ballots, being 2.3% of the total votes. Add half of 2.3 to 49 point, 49 point something, and he wins. Add half of 2.3 to 49 point something, he wins the election. He was looking for 25,000 votes to win. There were 205,000 spoiled ballots. How did it happen? It is widely believed Yomo Mafia. Because once the ballot, once they take the ballot in the accounting, and it is a vote for Professor Mills, and there's a stamp here, it's a rejected ballot. If there's any stamp, anything else on the paper, it's a rejected ballot. There was concern, especially at the Nima police station, I was there, where they said that the intention of the voter is clear, and the police said no. Electoral Commission, Electoral Commission said the rules are there. Electoral Commission said, you people went to Parliament and passed the rules. If there's any other thing on the ballot paper, it's a rejected ballot. That particular ballot was an Akufado vote. And the Akufado agent was saying that, ah, the intention of the voter is obvious. He's stamp printed Akufado. And they said, but there's a stamp here. And the Electoral Commission said, why is there a stamp on it? It's a sports ballot. So most of the sports ballots at that day at Nima Police Station appeared to be votes that had been, had been given to Akufado. After the count was done all over the country, 205,000 sports ballots. If you take 25,000 out of the 205,000 and give it to Nana Kufado, he's elected president in 2008. Yomo Mafia, it works. It's an allegation, but it works. So if you look at this election, NDC did well. Spoil ballots are significant. Let's move on. 2012, NDC did very well. They actually win. MPP, that's Nana Kufado, 5 million, 2 140 something thousand, NDC, 5 million, 540 something thousand, a difference of about 300,000, something like that. Uh, this is the matter that went to court. Rejected ballots, climbing up from 2008, 251,000. If you take 100,000 of the rejected ballots and give it to Nana Kufado, the election goes into a second round. But there you go. 251,000 rejected ballots. NDC and MPP should be very careful about this matter. Especially MPP. They should watch it. They should really watch it. That Yomo Mafia, the allegation of Yomo Mafia is very, very, very bad. It's an allegation. Okay? All right. Um, let's move to the next election. So, now keep your eye on this. 2016 is the next election. Keep your eye on this one. There we go. 2016 election. Okay. MPP, 5,755,000. Uh, NDC, 4 million, uh, Rejected ballots, 167,000. When MPP is winning, rejected ballots are low. When NDC is winning, rejected ballots are high. What accounts for this? How is it that rejected ballots are like this? 167 in 2016 went down, representing 1.5%. Rejected ballots. Okay. Now, let's look at 2020. An election that you look at the data and say the NDC did well. Okay. <laughs> Check it out, viewers. Check it out. 2020, an election NDC did well. MPP, 6,730,000 something something. 51% plus. NDC, 6,000,000. 277,000, 47% plan. Rejected ballots, 303,000, 2.3. NDC and MPP should watch it. Yomo Mafia, they should be careful. The allegation of Yomo Mafia, they should watch it and be extra, extra careful. This is the data. And uh, viewers, let, let's, let's get on with the, the debates and the action. I'll take the Dr. Baumia video, the one Dennis just brought. I'll take that now. Dr. Baumia has been campaigning. And he's in, uh, is it central or western region? I believe he's in western region. Have a look at this video. Have a look. <laughs> 